So as Anat said, I'm a figurative painter. I've been painting for about uh, 20 years. And um, I'm very interested in notions of gender and power in culture. And let's see if the slide clicker works. So I'm here today to talk to you about my series, Re-Western. But in order to do that, I want to talk to you about the personal context from which this body of work emerged. So for my undergraduate schooling, I went to the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, just above Maine, and a little to the right. Um, during this time, I solidified the two main trajectories for my creative work that have really carried me through to the present. The first is that I create images of women as I see us, and the second is that I create them using paint. So here's a diptych that I made in, in undergrad, and it was for a show titled Girls, Girls, Girls. And there are these places that have signs that say Girls, 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 and we titled our show Girls, 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 and then when you walked in the gallery, you had all these images of disinterested women. Anyway, so it was a little bit of a, a, little bit of a joke. Um, so in undergrad, um, I also became excited about the feminist art movement. Um, I really started hearing about the sort of efforts of the feminist art movement that started in the 1960s um, to bring awareness about women artists into culture. So this is one of my favorite pieces of feminist art. Uh, do women have to be naked to get into the Metropolitan Museum? Less than 5% of the artists in the modern art sections are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. So we have this gender power discrepancy happening, and the Gorilla Girls who made this poster and made billboards of it and placed them all over New York City, they're kind of highlighting that for us. Um, so the feminist art movement basically is to make art that reflects women's lives and experiences and to the, increase the visibility of women in the arts. So a lot of us could name maybe five to 10 male artists that are famous in culture, but we might be hard pressed to name more than maybe Georgia O'Keeffe and Frida Kahlo um, for women artists. And so um, it's, I think it's, this, this movement is really important, important for me, important for everybody. It's also to kind of change the foundations of the way art is received in culture. So um, things have been placed into museums, but they haven't necessarily been what everyone's created. So we had this real breakthrough um, with this exhibition that's pictured below, the G's Ben Quilt exhibition, where um, over 100 quilts were put on display in museums created by the, the women of G's Bend, Alabama. Um, so it's like a rural uh, African-American community in Alabama, and they had been really, really isolated due to their geography. Um, and so nobody had really seen this whole, um, this whole like, line of quilts that they'd been making for 100 years until an art curator went and found them and put them into the museum. And in the New York Times, um, the art critic said, these, these quilts are some of the most impressive modern art that's ever been made. But we don't necessarily know the names of these women. We might know Paul Clay or P Jackson Pollock. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to sort of highlight, highlight that. So one of the strategies of the feminist art movement is to go back into history and reinsert the, the female perspective that might have been missing. And so here in this slide, I've taken a, a painting on the left by uh, actually a female Renaissance artist, Artemisia Genileski, uh, one of the few female painters that we know. And I have recreated it with a contemporary woman and her pile of laundry. So the scene is, <laughs> Susanna being taunted by the elders, and I have my friend Miriana being taunted by her huge pile of laundry. So I'm poking fun at, at this stereotypical gender role while nodding to this fabulous female painter 
um, undermentioned in art historical texts. Okay. And here's, here's another, another one where I reinterpreted um, a portrait of a Renaissance nobleman and replaced the Renaissance nobleman with a contemporary art historian who actually studies Renaissance and Baroque portraiture. So I'm giving Eva Struhal on the right the same power as this Renaissance nobleman that she studies. So thinking about mining history, I became very, very interested in the, in the images of women war workers during World War II. And I wanted to draw this connection between my grandmother's generation and the access to the job market that I have today. Because these women who stepped into the job market created this opening that then allowed me to have more of an opening to enter the job market. And so to pay tribute to these women, I took these vague, undefined, historic photographs and I colorized them and placed my own friends into the historic scene. And from that composite, I created paintings. Um, it is uncanny how much my friend Janine looks like this woman from the 1940s. I mean, you'd think it was just the same person. So these are large-scale paintings, and one of the reasons I like to do large-scale paintings is because they're in your face. You know, they're, they're larger than life. They have a sense of power just because of their scale. And the small, low-resolution photographs that I was sourcing them from couldn't be blown up to maybe more than a, than a regular-sized piece of paper. So I created this series, and the only thing was that people, although it was very important to me that these were my friends and I was acknowledging this um, kind of line that happened between my grandmother's generation and my generation, pe other people didn't know that these were actually contemporary women in, in historic scenes. Okay. That brings us up to speed. Now I can actually talk to you about the re-Western paintings. Um, so over time, I've been interested in revisiting history. And I wasn't really thinking about that when I started the re-Western series. What I was thinking about is that I wanted to make an awesome series of paintings of large-scale cowgirls so that everybody, and women in particular, could have a hero um, to, to feel related to. So the way I start my paintings is that I take photographs and then composite. I kind of showed you that a little bit before. So I started this series by photographing my friends and compositing them into landscapes, sort of Western landscapes, and I was trying to trying to get this to work out. So I was trying to talk about the female hero and sort of gender and power and culture. And I created this set of um, composites and I ran it by a, a critique group that I work with. And they said, wow, well, she's very attractive. And I thought, oh, well, um, that's not quite what I was going for. Now, James Dean and John Wayne were also attractive right? Like, that was part of their appeal. But they also had this power. And so I wanted my cowgirls to have the same type of power. So I tried a few more composites, and the one on the bottom probably got closest um, to what I was hoping for. Um, but it really wasn't until I was playing around in the computer, really just playing, um, when I composited the head of one of my models onto the body of John Wayne <laughs> from the movie The Searchers. So I think you guys might know this image. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, that is so funny. That is so funny. But there's something about it that's really interesting. I'm like, it really it made me laugh out loud. But then I thought, wait a minute. These images um, of classic Western movies really have all the power that I'm interested in. 
And John Wayne and James Dean, they weren't really cowboys, they were actors, but we assigned them power and we assigned them all the things that go along with a hero. And so what I thought is, oh, what I need to do is I need to take these images and with the help of the gender flip and a little theater, I'm gonna turn John Wayne into Rebecca Wayne and Clint Eastwood into Virginia Eastwood, right? So it's, it's this recognizable scaffolding that people understand, and then the gender flip is just showing us, oh, I see, that's so interesting. We've been assigning all this power to these people, but why don't we just assign it to everybody? Just kind of even it out a little bit. Um, okay, let me talk to you about the process of making these paintings. So typically I use uh, friends as models uh, or family, but as you guys might know, uh, friends and family tend to give unsolicited feedback <laughs> all the time. And so I was thinking, you know, it would be great to not know the models, to just have mo people show up and then for me to assign them the, the heroic status of John Wayne and James Dean. And so my husband said, well, why don't you put an ad on Craigslist, which is like an online classified ad. And, and I said, well, I don't know about that. But I didn't have a better idea, so I thought, I better try this out, you know, at least, uh, at least I can try. And the, the classified ads, are, they're a little, a little sketchy, right? So the, the uh, Craigslist, I, I was going to put my ad up, and I was, it, it was, my little ad was surrounded by ads for, I'd like young models to come to my studio, and I'm, you know, come, become famous, and all this. So I was writing my ad, and I was like, I'm a female painter. I'm looking to create a series of powerful women cowgirls. And um, so lo and behold, I got a flood of responses. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, within minutes of posting this ad, I was just getting uh, messages in my inbox. Oops. And, but there was something that was happening. I scheduled the models and they were coming to my studio and I was photographing them and they were showing up wearing like mini shorts and crop tops. And I thought, we're doing a cowgirl photo shoot. There are stickers, we're in the field, we need to be working with horses. You know, this is really, um, somehow I am not communicating effectively with these models. And so I went to the modern day Oracle, which is Google, and I said, Google, what is cowgirls? What are cowgirls? And I, I, I grayed it out because I don't even like to look at this image, but I just typed in cowgirls and did an image search and it's all these like wildly over-sexualized images of women. I mean, like verging on pornographic. And I thought, no, I, I, I wanna reclaim cowgirls so that women have a hero to look up to. And so at that moment, I got really, really determined to find all the recognizable images in classic Western movies and to get models to come in and take on those poses. Um, so I was doing a lot of compositing. I was bringing the models into the studio. Um, and one of the funnest parts of this series was really the collaboration between myself and the models. Um, this model, this is for the remake of uh, James Dean in the movie Giant, I turned into Julia Dean. So this model came in wearing this skirt, and I thought, oh no, what have we done? And I had a rack of costumes, but nothing fit her. And after a while, we talked, and I explained to her, and we were taking on the facial expressions, and I had a mirror, and we were both making, trying to make the facial expressions that James Dean made. Um, and she said, wait a minute, I have the perfect boots. She said, do I have time to run home and get these boots? And I said, absolutely. And so, um, one of the best things about this painting, the red boots, um, was from that collaboration. So the original image is a black and white image, and then I'm sort of adding these little sparks of color. 
Um, and here's the process of, of photographing the scene from the searchers. So uh, the model typically does um, modeling, you know, some more standard modeling. But when she was doing this modeling, she said, my dad loves John Wayne, and we own a pizza restaurant in a small town in Texas. Would it be possible, when you're done with this painting, to give my dad a print of the painting of me as John Wayne alongside the uh, original image of John Wayne in the movie Searchers? So that is hanging in her family's pizza restaurant. So here's the paintings in my studio, and I, I, I put up this slide just for scale. So the paintings are really big. They're over life size. The tallest one is eight feet tall. Um, that's actually Julia Dean in the background where before I painted her face in. You can see there's like a warm underpainting underneath there. Um, one day I was working on this series and I had a model scheduled in the morning and a model scheduled in the afternoon and the model in the morning didn't show up. And then the model in the afternoon didn't show up. And I thought, I have wasted my whole day. I, I have a show opening in Houston in December and I need to get these paintings done. And I went into the Subway sandwich shop and lo and behold, this woman was standing at the counter. And I said, you're perfect. <laughs> she maintained almost that facial expression the entire time she ordered a turkey sandwich. And I just thought, <laughs> wow, I really need to get her. So before she finished her sandwich, I approached her and I had a postcard. It had one of my paintings on it. And I guess I'm not a terribly threatening person because she immediately agreed to come to my studio and have her photograph taken. So she became, uh, she transformed Gary Cooper into Lakeisha Cooper in the movie High Noon. Um, so some of the things I was also thinking about when doing these series was color. So um, in doing this, I wanted to assign the colors of the first African-American woman on the cover of Life magazine to my painting. And it wasn't that the audience was going to know that, but it was a way for me to even think a little more deeply um, about the images. So another version of uh, James Dean in the movie Giant. And then dissecting these images, I started to realize some things about them. Like the, the photograph of James Dean with this shotgun with Liz Taylor looking up at him was so similar to pictures of Mary Magdalene and the Christ figure. And that really is the history of painting. And then, so I'm sort of taking this image that they've kind of taken from the history of painting and kind of remaking it. And then in, in some, the more action shots, I tried to make the brush marks a little more active. So there are two parts to the series, the big uh, images where the woman is actually in the scene. And then there, you've probably seen the, the star portraits of John Wayne, um, where he has the hat. They're really wonderful photographs. Um, but I also gave each woman their own star portrait. And the last painting I made for this series um, was actually a request from then uh, Provost Karen Watson. She was then, she's now um, stepped down from that position, but at the time she was the highest ranking woman at Texas A&M University. And her favorite movie in the world is Open Range. She says she watches it every month. She knows the characters inside and out, so she, um, she suggested this painting for her portrait, or this movie for her portrait. The series debuted in Houston in, uh, at the G Gallery, and all the models came to the opening in full costume, which was really, really wonderful. And since then, actually came to Texas A&M University, and um, Abilene Christian University, and Stephen F. Austin, and all sorts of places around Texas. Uh, here's one of my models standing next to the painting of her. Um, there was also an exhibition called Women Painting Women Texas where a group of, of women painters got together and put on this exhibition and Stasha Dean was the poster child for that show. And this past year, much to my happiness, um, a, the curator from the Leeds College of Art and Design in Leeds, England contacted me and said, um, would it be possible to have your exhibition in Leeds, England? And I just thought, well, I'm going to absolutely say yes to that. 
and so in January, the show opened there. And the um, BBC picked it up. So, um, so that was very exciting. And it was right around the time of the Women's March in Washington, D.C., and so there was a lot of interest in society um, in talking about gender and power and culture, and so the, the timing was just kind of perfect for this series to go out into the world and get picked up by different media organizations. Um, so it's had quite a nice life, and I'm, I'm really thankful to share it with you today. Um, before I close, I want to invite you to go to an amazing exhibition at the Stark Gallery on the campus of Texas A&M University. It's in the Memorial Student Center, um, and it's called Women Painting Women in Earnest, and it's 80 paintings um, from 30 different painters from around the country. It's here in College Station through December 16th. Um, I have two paintings in that exhibition, and there's just as, they're amazing. It's really, really an amazing show. Um, so uh, thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm.